10th of February 2002, the Arsenal began a 13-game winning streak, which lasted until the end of the season to win the title. In February, are you just beginning to look ahead to the run-in and find your title-winning form, um, or is it too early yet? I think it's a little bit early, um, but you got to you got to just get points on the board. I would always say the last six games um, is vital. That's if you've got a chance to win it, and you've got to you know rely on other mistakes from the other teams around you. But I think it's a little bit early in February yet. Yeah. Well, let's find out. John is now for more on this as legendary broadcaster and a massive Arsenal fan. A very good morning, Piers Morgan. Piers, morning. Morning, Piers. Good morning, chaps. How are you? Uh, good. And it's interesting, Piers, isn't it? Arsenal back in it with that victory last weekend. Uh, they need to go on a run, though. We heard from Jurgen Klopp there, Piers, saying, you know, with City about, you have to win every game. Yeah, and he's right. But I think that City are not as good this season as they've been in previous seasons. I'm sure they're coming to the place where they're going to start getting City-like, and that's fine. But I thought that Arsenal on Sunday against Liverpool, that was the best performance, I think, under Arteta. And it also showed us a few things that we just need to tweak and sort. And I'm interested in what Ray thinks, because I've come up with a master plan, (laughs) because I'm sick and tired of Arsenal not having a proper striker. And uh, I think that Arteta has a blind spot about this. He has a ridiculous allegiance to Havertz, who I just don't think is good enough. Uh, And so here's my master plan, Ray. I think after what happened on Sunday, we have to have a midfield which has Jorginho and Rice. Apart from anything else, Jorginho is very calm and does his stuff brilliantly, but he also brings out the best in Rice. Now, up front, here's what I'm going to do. I think Martinelli should pull a Thierry Henry and start playing down the middle. Saka on the right, Trossard on the left. I would bench Jesus. I would send Havertz back to Chelsea, uh, and I would do that. And I think for the rest of the season, let's do that. Let's have the Mm. quick, strong guy down the middle, and let's actually have a proper go at having a striker. Because at the moment, the one weakness in this team is we don't have anyone down the middle that can finish. Mm. Havertz doesn't want to do it. He's not good enough. He's not a proper striker. And I think most Arsenal fans watching on Sunday would agree that all Jorginho got man of the match. Martinelli was the best player on that pitch. And I think that it's time we bit the bullet and we said, right, young man, it's time to pull a Thierry. Mm. Well, all I can say, Piers, about that is Martinelli is more dangerous off the left, um, and it's a different so, well, sort. So was, well, it's so a so different Thierry. game. It's a different so game. Yeah, no, I I, absolutely. Think, he did drift out to the left hand side. We on. all know, Ray. We all know that Havertz is not a proper striker. Right. No. This is the team that won the league when we had Ian Wright, Nicholas Anelka, Thierry Henry, Dennis Burkett, Robin van Persie. Right. We are not going to win the league with Kai Havertz leading the line. It's not going to happen. Jesus, by his own admission. It's not a natural goal scorer. So we don't have one. Hmm. And I think the most dangerous player we have uh, is Martinelli. And I don't see any reason why he can't actually move inside. And I think Trossard, that goal he scored on Sunday coming down the left, was brilliant. There's no reason he can't go on the left. Hmm. Piers, why is, why is Mikel then? You, you mentioned a blind spot. Yeah. I totally agree with you. Why doesn't he just... You know, hold his hand up and say, I need a, I need a goal scorer, I need a centre-forward. I, I, don't, I just don't get it. And I don't know why any Arsenal fans are not agreeing. Is it money, Piers? Is it money? Where they spent a lot well, of money I can find in the money. Let's sell habits, right? I don't <laughs> think... Uh, I, I like Nketiah, but I don't think he's up to it in the big games. I, I, you could get probably 30, 40 million for him. So there's your 100 million, Right. So, but but I think it, we, we obviously can't do it this season. No. We're in a very good position. I thought that was honestly a brilliant performance on Sunday. We completely outplayed Liverpool for most of that game. The Emirates atmosphere was the best I've seen it. I thought everything was right, but the one thing that isn't right is the striker situation. And if you're going to beat City, who've got Haaland up front, you've got to at least have a go at this. So my master plan, Ray, is now laid down, and I, I want Arsenal fans to seriously consider my master plan. Yeah, do you know what I'd like to do as well, uh, Piers. I was with uh, Paul Merson and Perry Groves in the week, and mm. I, I think they agree with me as well. I'd like to see the wingers, you know, if, if Martinelli does play on that left hand side and Saka on the right, every now mm. and again, after 20 minutes, swap sides. Mm, okay. Yes. And then they can go down the outside. Martinelli's more of a, a right footed player. Obviously, Saka's more of a left footed player. And some, suddenly the, the full backs have got a totally different uh, problem they've got. Uh, I agree. Look, I, I, I think. Look, I think that Jorginho was brilliant on, yeah, was, on yeah. Sunday, and that gives us real steel. Now we've got a very good defence. We've got a, a very good midfield. Now, if they, I, I think they should both keep playing together. 
But for some reason, it just really worked. And I think we all saw that. And I think that if we could just sort this striker thing out, and we do, obviously we can't buy anyone until the end of the season now, but I, I think my plan is the one that could get us to a title. I do. What do you make of uh, Jamie Carragher's uh, comments? Because Absolutely I was, I, pathetic. I was, I pathetic. was celebrating. I was celebrating when they won. Because uh, do you get my point? If Arsenal would have lost that game against Liverpool, that was it. All They're over. out of time. Yeah, exactly. All and that, over. It was a much bigger game for Arsenal. Than it was Liverpool. But sorry, look, right. Here's the deal. VAR has sucked all the joy and life out of goal scoring, right? So when a great goal is scored now, no one can celebrate because you have to wait 10 minutes to see whether some clod in a little office somewhere has, has decided if someone's <laughs> one inch ahead of his uh, of his head. And I just think the whole thing has got completely ridiculous with VAR. It's sucked the joy and fun mm. out of watching live football. So what have we got left? Well, we've got winning a match against the team at the top of the league and are playing brilliantly and we dismantle them at the Emirates in front of an absolutely buzzing crowd. And what are the crimes that are committed? Arteta runs down the touchline jubilantly, just like Mourinho did against Ferguson, just like Klopp has done a million times, <laughs> just like every damn manager in the history of football has done when his team roll over the team at the top of the league and play that well. And then what happens? Our captain, Odegaard, takes a picture. Has the audacity <laughs> to take a picture yeah. of Stuart McFarlane, the club photographer, yeah. an absolute club legend since the Amazon documentary. He takes a picture of him with the fans. And this apparently is the most heinous crime in world football history. Jamie Carragher, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Piers, I don't want you to. I don't want you to have a stroke here, but nah. my, my, spleen, my <laughs> spleen is beginning to vent. And by the way, I was leaping around like a like an overexcited rabbit on uh, <laughs> Sunday when those goals went in, and I make no apology for it. Well, we are allowed to celebrate a great win. Well, are you celebrating? And Gareth thinks that if he, you know the the Euros go well, he'll stay on for another two years as England manager. Now, I'm not sure you would be in agreement with that. Uh, yes, if he wins the Euros. Mm, uh, exactly. And by the way, uh, by the way, why shouldn't we win the Euros? Look at this team that we're going to have, right? Harry Kane up front, Bellingham, probably best player in the world right now. I could be Foden, Declan Rice. And, you know, I could go on. We've got an amazing team of players, yeah. and so if we don't win, actually, I would say that it will be a bit like the last Euros where we should have won it. That, that my only complaint about Southgate is that. In that final, I was there. I think we all share the view that, that that he just got too defensive towards the end of that game. And what we should have done was gone on mm. the attack, unleash yeah. Grealish, do some, something different, and go for the win. And that that's the one thing with Southgate. I think he's a little bit too defensive. But he's got an amazing. He's got on paper, arguably right now, they're all fit. One of the best squads in England football history so he should yeah. win the Euros and if he wins the Euros absolutely he should carry on to the World Cup yeah. if he loses we move on Piers enjoy Sorry, the West agree. Ham game thank Cheers, you Piers. very much oh, my prediction is 3-0 three, three Declan Rice hat-trick in his old, <laughs> uh, old backyard and he won't be booed at all Brilliant. and I then he kiss, they keep kissing the Arsenal badge in front of oh, the no, old, no, no, no. Piers, the old West Ham yeah. fans <laughs> Talk Sport Breakfast with Alan Brazil. Thursday and Friday morning, 6 till 10 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.